Hi there, thanks for joining me. In this video, I'll explain how to use Corel Painter. What I mean by how to use Corel Painter is how it, it's intended to be used, uh, because I find with some of my students, there's a little bit of confusion as to which tools to use uh, for what purpose. So one of the first things I want to point out is that in Corel Painter, you have all these different categories of brushes. You have acrylics and uh, charcoal and liquid ink and markers and all of these things. Uh, so if we want to, we could use a marker here, an art marker, and we could draw with it. And you can see it works pretty much like how a marker would work uh, if we use charcoal with an appropriate color. You can see depending on which one of these brushes you use, you get some kind of cool charcoal effects. That's going to kind of depend on which paper you're using too. But the important thing is that you don't have to use a charcoal brush to only do charcoal drawings. Um, this brush would probably work pretty well to make trees in a painting that looks like an oil painting because the brush makes really nice easy uh, leaf shapes so it doesn't have to be used with only gray like this to do a black and white drawing uh, it would be the same thing I'm just gonna hide these for a minute It'd be the same thing with uh, acrylic for instance if we start using uh, this acrylic paint we start painting we don't only have to paint with acrylic brushes and there's nothing that says we can't go and grab a chalk brush and put some chalk right on top of that acrylic because this isn't real acrylic and it's not real chalk uh, what these are these are brushes that simulate the behavior of a brush so the way a chalk a uh, piece of chalk behaves is a uh, little flakes of the chalk rub off and stick to the paper and generally it picks up a lot of the paper texture quite easily versus acrylic uh, generally doesn't pick up much paper texture at all and it's thick and clumpy and leaves these streaks when you paint with it so what you want to think about now is how you want to paint because you might want to do some paintings that look like acrylic so if that's your goal then you might want to intentionally only use acrylic brushes and try to you know paint it in such a way that it looks more like acrylic same thing with chalk however you don't have to do that if you don't want to if you want to mix mediums you can mix mediums and what I prefer to do is experiment with brushes for instance think about what you want to paint and then find a brush that works really well for that. Like, let's say our goal is to paint a bush or a, a tr tree. So let's try some different brushes for that. We get the digital airbrush here. Pick a tree color. And try to draw our tree. And we get something that looks like a toxic cloud. Let's try it with the chalk brush. And this kind of works, but it's too, it's too many gaps in the leaves. So that might work in combination with something else, but on its own, it doesn't work very well. Let's try the custom sponge. This is just a sponge that I changed some settings on, and this seems to work really, really well. Actually, I like that quite a bit. And we'll try one more. Let's try this uh, wet soft acrylic and drawing lines with it doesn't work so well but I think maybe tapping tapping and dragging a little bit might produce some kind of interesting results maybe for a different kind of leaf pattern might even work really well for like a palm tree whereas some of the other brushes don't so you can see here by experimenting you can tell which brushes are going to work for which purposes now again, you don't only have to use acrylic brushes to do acrylic style painting. Uh, you could use it to do anything you want. What you want to think about is 
what shape do I want to make? And then find a brush that makes that shape. And that's just going to take experimenting. Um, you know, of course, watching these videos, I have a lot of suggestions as to which brushes work well for uh, different types of things that you can paint. But you can figure that out on your own too. And you might have different preferences than I do about uh, which brushes to use. So what made me think of this is one of my students uh, was working with me and he wanted to put a tint over uh, the whole painting. So what he wanted to do was to get a watercolor brush and then select blue and then start painting, which is fine. But I kind of instantly knew that I knew what he was thinking about here. He was thinking, okay, watercolor is naturally transparent and it works really good for tinting in a real life scenario. If you were painting with a real watercolor, uh, it would work pretty well for tinting and it does. However, I asked him, is the reason that you want to use the watercolor because you want this watercolor texture that you're going to get specifically from the watercolor brush? Or is it just because you want to tint the background? Um, and he wasn't really sure. Um, but what I explained to him was that you don't necessarily have to use uh, watercolor or a marker or any other kind of transparent uh, medium to accomplish a tint. You can do it with lots of other brushes. And the same goes for any of these things like these trees here. You can still paint trees using different brushes, but you just get different results. So I, I showed him a different way to tint, which is this is how I would tint. I would make a new layer for my tint. And then if we set our composite mes method or our blend mode here to multiply, this will essentially make this layer that's set to multiply tint anything that's below it. So pick a blue color here. And then we can just simply fill, or we'll just paint in for the sake of painting, uh, paint in this blue here, and you can see it tints. If we wanted to tint it red, we could use a different color. And if we wanted to do some kind of more um, shaded kind of tinting, we can use an airbrush with a low opacity setting. And we can paint in some sort of vignette here. So you just want to find brushes that work for you, combine them in any sort of combination. And when you find brushes you like, you can of course tweak all their settings and you can save them. Uh, you can watch my video on customizing brushes. I'll include that in the description for this video. And then you'll be able to make your own palettes and things. But again, don't, don't get stuck in this and decide that you only have to paint with watercolor or you only have to paint with acrylics or you only have to paint with oil. These, these are just brushes. They're just mimicking the way that another brush would work. And you're, you're not supposed to really be trying to copy everything about traditional art. I mean, there is some, there is some sort of uh, mimicry that you're going to perform here to get certain results but it doesn't mean that you're constrained by any of the constraints of the physical medium in the real world. You know, like obviously in the real world, you couldn't put watercolor on top of chalk. It would probably do something really weird and the watercolor wouldn't stick, but in the digital world you can, so you should. That's kind of the point of working in this medium. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really up to you to do what you want creatively, but I just kind of wanted to clarify that because I think initially um, the way this program is set up, they want it to be very appealing to traditional artists. So they put a lot of like just different lingo and different methods for painting in here um, and different tools that kind of make it feel like a more traditional painting experience. But it also kind of leads you to believe that there are these certain limitations when there really aren't any limitations at all. So have fun experimenting now that you know that you don't have to just kind of go in one direction. 
If you have any more questions, feel free to comment on this video and I'll be glad to answer them. If you found this information useful, take a second to like this video or share it, and that'll make it a lot easier for other artists out there to find this information. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.